Hi, and welcome to the latest edition of City Line Book Club. We're here today to talk about all the broken things, and let's just get our chat going, ladies. Let's go for it. So one of the things I really want to talk about was just the concept of there being a bear who is best friends with a boy. I mean, I know Marilyn was saying that she can like not even imagine raccoons in her backyard, let alone a bear. So I was just wondering what you guys thought about how believable that was. Did that work for you? I thought it was totally believable. And I think maybe that is a testament to the writing, the way the author sets up the story, uh, the time it was in the city. You can see it being a time in Toronto where there were less rules and regulations and things might have flown under the radar a little bit more than they would now in 2014. And uh, it just seemed believable to me. So that just means we have a good author on our hands. For sure, I totally agree. And I think when, you know, so much of the story is set at a carnival or a midway kind of um, setting, which I already think there's a bit of a magical element to that oftentimes. So the boy and bear story, I totally bought into it. And I think too, I, I needed that relationship because so many of Bo's relationships were so negative and he had to be an adult in so many situations. So this is one of those relationships where he could kind of be a kid and it was very, like, there was just so much simplicity. Like, that scene at the beginning with him and the bear and the ice cream, that was just, I loved that scene. And it was just one of those few real beautiful scenes he had in his life that you could see. So I just, I just felt that the magic of that relationship was so huge in that story. Oh, okay, give me that mic, give me that mic. <laughs> okay, so the, the beginning part, I'm going, yeah, right. There's a bear in his backyard, like, you know, yeah, and there's an elephant in my house, you know, so. <laughs> But I, I will say that by the end of the book, I, I did t totally, and I, you're right, it's the, the magical writing that she did. But it, the beginning part, it was like, oh gosh, I'm not going to like this one. And there's a <laughs> bear in his backyard. Like, maybe that's why I wouldn't have raccoons if I had a bear in the backyard. There's a good idea. That's a good idea. Okay, who's next? Question, question, Tracy? Uh, I'll go next. Okay. Okay, for me, the story was very driven by the cultural difference in the characters. So what role do you think culture played in the way the characters interacted? Who wants to go on this one? You. Marilyn seems to have an answer. <laughs> so um, I forget where I heard this, but they were talking about how culture affects how you go for a job interview. And so from different nationalities, like you would have different, you know, rules and regulations. And, and I didn't even think of that until I saw your question. And I was like, oh my God, that's such a smart question. I, maybe I'm the dumbest person here today, but seriously, but I thought, you know what? I bet that had so much to do in the whole thing about the boat and, 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 and I, like he just, like I didn't know anything about that culture. So I'm not answering the question, but I just wanted to say that. <laughs> You are answering the question. I, I guess in my mind when I asked that question, I was also thinking about uh, Rose's relationship with Orange. And, and so, you know, to think that someone would have a child and treat them in that way is, I think, unfathomable to so many people. But then to think back to what she's been through with her family, what she's going through currently, their perceptions of disabilities and... Um, it's very different than the modern Western North American way of dealing with things. And so as much as it was atrocious and outrageous, it was actually a little bit less outrageous and atrocious if you looked at it from a cultural perspective. So there was that. And then there was also the lack of communication. Now, almost any teenager can relate to that, but I felt like there were, there were extra layers there because of their crazy, tragic story. And there are so many instances in the book where I'm just, I'm hurting for Bo because everything he wants to say, he can't say. He can't say, I need you here for us. He can't say, I want you to say, you love me. He can't say, um, you know, in that last interaction with his father where they're locking eyes that, that was their way of saying love or showing love. And it, the amount of things that went unsaid in this book tore me up. It was a great lesson for me as a parent too. Like you just have to say it. Everything has to be right at the surface because he sat there in that kitchen and at some point his mother was crying and he said to himself, I was gonna go back to comfort her but I said I wasn't gonna go back through that door. And it's like there were all these little rules about keeping a wall up and having barriers and, and that just, it broke my heart. I'll go next just because I think that my question kind of flows from yours. Um, so how did you feel about the constant negative language used towards Orange um, by Bo and his mother? 
because it was it was pretty intense for me. It got to me for sure. Well, I I, I know because uh, Amber Rose and I actually talked about this before that the the one scene that I just I broke reading about was the scene when uh, Bo is taking pictures of Orange, mm -hmm. and all the things he's saying to her. I it was so hard for me because I. You know, I wasn't okay with what Rose was saying to Orange or about Orange either, but somehow I had kept my distance from getting too emotionally upset about that because Bo was always still so protective and in love with his little sister. But when he had that dark scene, it just ripped me to pieces. I, I was very uncomfortable reading that scene. That was really, really hard. It was very well written, but it was very hard to read. Uh, and I, I just want to go back to the cultural thing for a moment here because um, what a lot of people don't understand is that when you're coming from a certain culture, there's a lot of internalized stuff. So you're hearing messages from other people about who you are and you're taking that in and then you're being raised to believe certain things about yourself from your parents and all of this information has to be taken into one brain. And I felt that Bo spewing all that stuff out about Orange was the mixed messages from everywhere being bundled up and thrown out in one big ball of mess. And so internalized racism, internalized hatred, all of that stuff is very much a part of the immigrant experience. You take on the negative messages and you don't necessarily know, you don't have an outlet to, to make it go anywhere. And I felt like that was happening in that exchange. So while I was outraged by it, I kind of, I understood it. He's taking all those messages and he's throwing it out out there um, in a way that it's so disgusting but it needed an outlet <laughs> I think that was the part that got to me is because she's she's four years old yeah. three four, four years old and she's innocent and naive and not necessarily knowing at all times what's going on around her and and for them to be talking to her like that it just I don't know it was it was intense it was very intense that part and I have to say, just going on from what you guys have said, I, I loved that they included that part at the end where her story does develop into something else. Mm -hmm. And she learns to communicate, and he re Bo realizes, because I think he has that really ugly scene, but overall, I mean, he's her caregiver, right? He, he loves her. Um, and just that guilt and that feeling of shame that I didn't know all of this time that she was trying to communicate when she was doing all these things. And, you know, and then he wants to communicate back with her. I thought that was just so beautiful. And, and the final scene, I won't give it away, that scene just brought me to tears. Just all this, you know, she's been hidden for so long. And for that to happen at the end, I thought that was just absolutely a beautiful way to end the book. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's my question. I strongly disliked, okay, I really sort of hated <laughs> Max. And, and did you think that he was using Bo's mom? to get to Orange, or do you think he actually loved her, and did he know what love was, or was that his way of loving? Because I I never, I don't like him. He's a bad man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I want to believe he loved her. Like, I just, I want something good for Rose in her life, because we'll actually talk a little more in a separate little spoiler, spoiler-heavy video about, uh, more about Rose, but I wanted some good for her in her life because it really it's a whole lot of bad, but I don't know. Max was, I, I I think he was just trying to get to Orange is still how I kind of feel about it, but I, I don't know. I didn't, I hated him too though, but I wanted good things for her. I hate his guts and <laughs> I'd like to believe that. Because I'm a bit of a naive person, I tend to think of the best in people. I, I want to believe that every character can't be so one-dimensional. So I'm going to say that there was a nugget, whether that was his crazy way of showing love or whether it was actual, authentic love. I want to believe that he was in love with Rose. And it wasn't just all about the ulterior motives, although that was bonus. I think that he loved her. I think every, every evil guy has a, you know, a thing. Sometimes it's a little pet they like. <laughs> it could be a sick thing, but they have a thing, right? So I'm hoping it was love. In my opinion, I felt that he kind of, and this is where the reason why I didn't like him either, is because he kind of came into the, into the picture and sort of interrupted their life and kind of took away what they had. And, and all of a sudden, he, you know, she, Rose is making pancakes for Max. It's like, 
why didn't she do that for Bo and Orange? And I don't know that I didn't really that's I didn't really like him because of that. I don't know. Yeah, but when you're a single mother and there's no one else around and somebody shows you love, you make them pancakes, you know? It's not because you don't love your kids as much. It's just that it makes you happy for a moment. But I just found him very manipulative, and you know, and it, it like ulterior motives, and maybe that's a bad man's version of being in love, but yeah, I still think he's a big poop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, ladies, for uh, that was a really good chat. And just so you know, if you do want to hear more about us talking about Rose, Bo's mom, watch the video that you'll find below this one because we're going to talk a little more. But um, thanks for chatting about all the broken things with us and reading along. We hope you enjoyed it. And if you leave a comment at the bottom of this post, you can be entered to win a prize pack from Random House Canada. And next time up, we're going to be reading The Confabulist by Stephen Galloway. So stay tuned for more great content about that. Thanks for watching. Yay, high five.